I just got to do this one Jason Whitlock really dumb clip just to end on a fun note. I'm sorry. The Whitlock thing on the nor rich men. Okay, so guys, I don't know if you've seen this stupid song on the internet, but it's called Rich Men North of Richmond. And I can't tell, is that a Confederate reference, Matt? Or is that just like about DC? Uh, it's about, about DC, DC, but you know, I mean, look, at, uh, as, a, as somebody who's not a fundamentalist and capable of, or, uh, iron, uh, I'm more of an ironic minded person as a funda in instead of a fundamentalist minded person, which means I'm able to see multiple meanings in the same thing. Uh, I think there's a little bit of a little uh, bit of whistle both. there. Yeah. yeah. And, and so this guy, you know, we're not going to play the song. You can find it literally anywhere. Um, but basically, the tone the tone of the song is um, DC, DC guys in politics don't understand the real people. But you know who also don't understand the real people? Those fat pieces of garbage on welfare. Yep. There's a so the first verse is like how hard it is to work and not get a raise, and I'm like, okay, this is fine. And then the second verse is you know about basically wokeness, fat people on welfare, all this kind of stuff that is uh, clearly right wing focused and. There was this coordinated campaign. I saw Matt Walsh did a video on it. I saw Ben Shapiro did a video on it. Like, wow, this guy's really speaking, speaking to the heart of the country. Everyone needs to hear this. Matt Walsh called it the protest song of our generation. Um, it seemed almost like this was almost astroturfed. Like everyone, desired, everyone said this song, you know, it's going to go viral. And all of the right wing media decided together to cover it. This coverage by Jason Whitlock was just so lazy and so over the top at the same time that I had a good hearty laugh about it last night and I wanted to uh, play it for you all as a treat. The fact that this song is having this kind of impact speaks to what the overwhelming majority of Americans are feeling in this moment. That's why it's popular. And I, I didn't, <laughs> I'm not sure if people will follow me when I go here. And, and if you follow the show, I'm reluctant to play the Trump card a lot because it's very distracting. But, but that's the only card I can think to play here. <laughs> Double on This guy's like the Donald Trump of music. Man, these and that's why he's so dangerous. And that's why corporate media will try to either seduce him out of what he's committed to doing. Or they're going to try to smear and embarrass him and demonize his music and silence him. And that's why I'm saying we got to pray for this guy. Sure, man. Because I'm not sure that he fully knows what he's stepping into. Okay, pause it. So he, he, the reason we were, that's all we, I just wanted that money line of he's the Donald Trump of music. Um, in that it's all a fugazi, potentially. I mean, what he's stepping into, look, I, uh, I want to say about this. I don't know that, like, I think there might, uh, so, well, let's, you, can, you can go. Look, I'll give this more. context, right? Yeah. This is a stupid, this is a Z squirrel, you know, great account on Twitter, but I can't independently verify it. But the Bongino tweet does seem to give credence to it. So this is an unproven theory. But a lot of people online speculating that this was some sort of coordinated campaign by the right. This account, MAGA, the MAGA Hulk, says, I didn't want to comment on all this because Oliver Anthony seems like a genuinely great guy, but Matt Walsh is sanctum. Okay, so there's all this drama. Um, but it says, Jason Howerton seems to be a key player involved in the astroturfing campaign. He's the CEO of Reach Digital, which helps media companies and political influencers grow their social media footprint exponentially. Jason was one of the first accounts heavily promoting this song as he provided a background on Oliver Anthony and his faith. Jason indicates that Oliver Anthony has had been contacted to record the song jason also admits he even covered the cost to produce the record uh so essentially the accusation is that it's a conservative astroturf campaign and look this is one account saying that but then dan john bongino tweets this jason works with me jason is a great guy who texted me last week blown away by the emotion in oliver's song jason wanted to help he flew from california to north carolina help to help oliver get his get the message out yes that's what he does he uses his digital platforms to spread the word mine included this effing moron below doesn't have a clue about what happened imbeciles like these effer below are what decimate our movement they open their big mouths about shit they have no okay so so anyway um that's Bongino confirming that that guy, Jason uh, 
Howerton at least did work with this person on their on their um, music on this particular uh, song and his uh, work is involved in you know getting things out there on social media particularly with conservatives and so it must have just been a total coincidence that ben shapiro matt walsh jason whitlock all these all these right-wing shows i believe stephen crowder all covered it at the same time i also love that this guy it speaks to a truth i love that bongino was pissed off at the at the maga hulk for this because at the end of this tweet he says this was another conservative ink asterisk. No, that's campaign. not that's Embrace not Bongino. It. No, I'm saying yeah, Ben G. Bongino's upset. Bongino oh. quote tweeted this guy being like, "F this guy." Oh, he says at the literally end. literally at the end he says, "This was another conservative ink astroturf campaign." Embrace it. He's just being like, "Let's be honest about it. It's fine. Like, let's continue." Well, let's I think it's being a little bit stuff. ironic, isn't it? Um, I don't know. Like, I, well, I mean, look, I think like the the I I don't know at what point this became fabricated. I, I'm willing to believe that this guy had this song, and all of a sudden the writer's like, "Hey, this is a good." propaganda opportunity for us but i think what carl says is uh, like another thing so he takes the issue with hamilton nolan's carl uh, behar carl behar yeah um takes issue with hamilton nolan's piece which is a says, suggestion that if anthony is genuine the buzz must be genuine too fueled by some authentic stream of working class rage carl continues just the opposite it's ruling class rage that explains why we're hearing this guy instead of billions of other workers who are just as upset some of their promotional tactics are probably covert um and he you know continues that um they talks about the apple music spike and those things are often like juiced like Tim Pool obviously right um, um, uh, when politicians like Marjorie uh, Taylor Green give him free marketing to millions of followers they aren't reacting to a viral hit that grew organically from the working class that's with him on anything they're creating a hit through a carefully organized and grotesquely funded uh, right wing marketing uh, system and Carl says the distinction is crucial if the left wants to really understand the ideological challenge we're facing the implicit analysis people like Nolan have given us here is that Anthony is just a case of bad luck in another universe we might have had a viral working class anthem with good politics mm-hmm. instead of bad politics in the end it's just another misfortune that the song got popular uh, also just so happens to call for tax cuts but once we stop understanding this guy chai Rachik, um and every other viral organic right wing publicity stunt from the last 20 years is an organ ongoing string of bad luck we can ask americans to start questioning the hype machine and like that's it is like this there's a hype machine that exists so like whether this guy like i i don't know that he is i i don't know for certain that he knows what he stepped into either i think i think he's definitely being used and probably somewhat aware um that he wants to take that ride um and he i also think he had just definitely has bad politics i didn't i'll be honest i didn't watch well can video. i read some of the lyrics to you yeah okay um so it starts off you know i'm working all day overtime hours for bullshit pay and i'm like okay this is good like this is about you know the difficulty of living under capitalism yeah. but no um it turns into uh, i wish politicians would look out for minors with an e and not just minors on an island somewhere lord we've got folks in the street ain't got nothing to eat and these obese wil- milk and welfare well god you're a five foot three and you're 300 pounds taxes ought not to pay for your bags of fudge rounds young men are putting themselves six feet in the ground because all this damn country does uh is keep on kicking them down real strain on that rhymes and rhyme the, scheme there yeah and and then he does the, the, the for some reason the chorus is like 80 percent of the song but um it just like when 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 Whitlock says there it's it appeals to the overwhelming majority of Americans like no no it doesn't no none it absolutely does not because as we're in the midst of this hot labor summer a moment of class solidarity what this song does is it serves capitalists it says it's actually the welfare queen's problem it's actually your fellow man that the reason that he is struggling to make a wage um this is not a protest song it is an artificially over uh promoted song that is meant to divert attention from the reality of what like labor action should be and that's not to you know a zero-sum game where some heavy set welfare person is stealing your taxes and you know we all know what this person's referring to there um it is about expanding those resources yeah. I, I just want to caution a little bit because i see like um chatter vouch did a two-hour uh video showing that oliver anthony's youtube likes playlist has 9 11 conspiracy videos blaming jews it's completely astroturfed and there's a lot of evidence that seems contradictory to me if this was completely astroturf from the beginning why wouldn't you say hey can you delete that stuff where you're blaming Jews for 9-11 like i think they saw a song by a guy who has shitty politics and they're like 
this sounds like something we look there's not a whole lot coming from us on the culture front that is frankly remotely like appealing to people broadly yeah we have to use this guy i i think it's that as opposed to like this is this guy previously worked for like uh jeff sessions or something no, I, I, I still think it can be astroturf, though, under that definition. But uh, yeah, no, but it's astroturf in the in the way that like all these things are, which is that they they'll use a propagandist, um, you know, for value to the extent that they're available. Yeah. Um, and the, yeah, like the and then the prominence is, yeah, of course, artificial. And like, I, yeah, I don't care about online music charts. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Tim Pool or whatever this guy. It's just or that the, blow. their obsession with being in the culture is pathological and it's also the only way that they can get there is by cheating i mean and 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 then that's why they do 400 videos or like it's two hour review by ben shapiro on barbie because they're they're kept out of culture because what they're selling is not appealing um all right guys i'm really sorry no more time for calls gonna read some ims and get out of here we will take more calls tomorrow we will uh, maybe a uh, able caucus says they were actually more agreement with me so um just to point that out there okay wanna, okay well then then i want to invoke a commenter and then misrepresent <laughs> them. um dylan m class trader should be used more as a slur to call out artists and others like him uh class trader should be used against who uh that 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 artist um well, the, the singer, the yeah the song singer yeah I don't yeah, like but class I don't know trader if, as a as a term. Uh, I, I don't know that we definitely know his class. Like I, I think I mean to the point uh, you know about like he's a little bit uh, like artificial. Like I think and I, again like all this stuff is unclear. But like he seems to be like a property owner and uh, yeah I don't know I I don't know that we know his class. I think he's middle class probably. Uh, Juniper J, I'm thinking the song's lyrics would sound much better with Vivek rapping them. Well, we didn't even play him doing Lose Yourself. We don't need to do that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I sent Matt, like, a, a video, another video of him, like, doing another free... Uh, uh, it's not freestyle. freestyle. No, and it's... then and then you were like Emma. There's like dozens of these on the internet. Trust me, I've seen all of them. Isn't that what you said? No, I thought, no, no, no. Oh, oh wait, 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 no, never mind. It was Maybe the opposite. It wasn't you. Like, I, no, I said like there. If he actually was sincere about like that, he used to do this all the time. We would see more videos of it instead of him yes. just doing Eminem. No, doing is... it now, but there's no videos of him doing it at yeah. Harvard. It's yeah. just reported on in the Crimson. The only time we've ever seen him freestyle is the "We'll have some fun." I'll see you on the out the trail. Out the trail. Yeah, and it's yeah. like, oh, that doesn't seem like you've, that seemed like how Dude, I would do freestyling. Right yeah. Now. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, Charlie Sheher, I appreciate your guys' take on housing. My last landlord didn't bother to fix the fence that fell over in a storm or the window that broke upstairs, which added an extra 600 bucks a month to my power bills for a couple of years, only doing something to out them on my last three days of kicking me out to sell the place. It's insane that they treat housing as a commodity that needs to increase in value rather than something sturdy that you need to live in. Also, that Michael Flynn clip reminds me of the people who stay trans people need to be nicer about fighting for our existence. Uh, fight j back and we're too extreme don't fight back and we get victim blame disgusting yep can't win yeah space case uh please read my last i am of a white savior movie so bad civil rights activists dubbed it rambo meets the clan um <laughs> i'm gonna have birth of a nation uh here we go i have to search oh mississippi burning um i think mississippi well, that's burning a Gene is, hackman one right is the worst white savior movie definitely it's pretty bad if you don't remember, it attempts to tell the stor true story of the FBI investigation of the disappearance of three civil rights activists. It paints a picture of the FBI being social justice warriors during the leadership of freaking J. Edgar Hoover. Yep. We watched that in, uh, I mean, isn't that kind of, I, I haven't seen Black Klansman, but it kind of I haven't seems, seen it either. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, I remember watching that in high school and it was like, oh, the FBI, I think we have the FBI to save us from those. Is that really the premise of Black Klansman? I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'm being reductive and people can comment on it. I haven't seen Black Klansman though. But that would be dis depressing because, I mean, well, I don't know. Spike Lee's doing crypto ads, so I guess he's kind of far, far gone. So um, five more. Patchy Rick. I literally re just redownloaded TikTok and was getting the first verse of this song all over the place, but got bummed the hell out when I streamed the whole song and heard the second verse. Yeah. Oh, the country guy? Yeah. Interesting. I haven't seen it on TikTok at all. I guess that's just my feed. But if he just re-downloaded it, it means like that's it. It might be in the uh, like auto auto algorithm. Um, Patton from Ohio, uh, Olivia Oliver Anthony's YouTube likes are public, and he thinks Jews did 9/11. Yeah. Um, 
ESPN Sports Center, uh, ESPN anchor and anti-vaccine crank Sage Steele has decided to leave ESPN after settling her lawsuit against them, saying she will go somewhere where she can freely exercise her First Amendment rights. Um, when will right-wingers understand that their right to get free speech only protects them from being prosecuted by the government for their speech and not from private companies that employ them from enforcing a code of conduct? I mean, it's going to be fun not to hear from Sage Steele anymore. <laughs> Yeah. Not that I heard. Not that I listen to ESPN at all. I mean, man. She was still there? (sighs) It's unreal how, like, they they just, they're a shell. (laughs) And I know someone that used to work there, and it is not a fun work environment. Um, Okay. Uh, Dave Brownies, WFAN, should have hired you five years ago. (laughs) I don't know if that would be a fun work environment either, got to be honest. Um, Eli from Jersey. The only reason I'm saying this is because Sa- because Sam is in here, so everyone would get it. But Gucci Mane just said he wanted to sign Oliver Anthony. Oh God, the Richmond, north of Richmond guy. Highly unimportant, but kind of funny. Um, get that bag. All right, Professor Soy Boy, the uh, second to last. If Flynn actually paid attention on an Auschwitz tour, he might have heard about the Jewish resistance that organized escapes and even blew up one of the crematoriums. Jewish people are just a tool for the ghouls to be conveniently trotted out when they ha- need a rhetorical shield against accusations of fascism. Right. Well said. Uh, yeah, I- often those guys just invoke uh, Jews to say, like, this is why we need to, uh, um, to be able to have uh, AR-15s. Yep. And the final I am of the... Day. Okay. Um, John Miller. I wish people like Whitlock would keep that energy about popular things with policies like Medicare for All rather than stupid artificially inflated songs and movies like Sound of Freedom. Yep. Whitlock is, a, is broken brained. He's basically a Nazi. He's very dumb, too. He's not very good at his job. The Blaze is like... Hey, the Blaze has got to be feeling a little bit better because uh, whatever Steven Crowder's assembling over at Rumble is now the C-team.